Now then everybody, it's Dan from Homefacy.com, got another edition of the Home Gym Buyer's Guide. In this one I'm going to be looking at what to look for when choosing your dumbbells. Now, first thing I'm going to say is that recently I've been training pretty much completely exclusively with a barbell. So just be aware that dumbbells are not exactly de a, a desperate buy for your home gym. You can get by with a barbell pretty damn nicely. Um, but I'm going to go into it anyway. The more common types of dumbbells that you can get, you're looking at hex dumbbells, which are just like solid block dumbbells, or so basically fixed dumbbells. So you'd get a rack of them, different weights, uh, different sizes, different, you know, what have you. Um, power blocks, these are basically what's known as um, adjustable dumbbells. So you've got like power blocks, bow flex, things like that, things where they come quite compact so with all the different weight settings on them, and basically you just pick which ones you want and you take it off. Uh, other types of dumbbells are spin lock dumbbells, but they generally tend to be about one inch fitting, so you're gonna be limited with what amount of weight you can use on them. They're generally gonna go up to quite like a lower range of the weight scale. Basically, you slide plates on and you spin lock them on, basically. Uh, you generally tend to find that that application is used with things like, um, you know, like starter home gym kits where it's like plastic weights and you just slide them on, fill them with sand or water. Uh, the final one that I'm going to talk about is what I've got, which is Olympic collars. Now you can see I've got a couple of little weights on here because uh, the other half was using these the other day and uh, she tries, bless her, but there you go. Anyway, basically all these are just Olympic sized collars, so whatever weights you've got for your barbell, you can use them on here. Obviously you've got to take into account the size of the plates that you're using, but 10 kilo weights are fine to use on these without really affecting your range of motion, I found it. With bench, it's not so bad, but you can get away with it. For things like heavy crock rows, stuff like that, yes, stick a 10 on and it'll be fine, not a problem. I'm just gonna quickly go through what I think is the pros and cons of each of them. Uh, let's start off with the hex. Okay, so a fixed dumbbell, if you ask me, it's the perfect solution. It's, it's the one that I would go for myself if I had lots of money and lots of space because in order to have these, that's what you really need. You need either a really good stacking system, and I mean, you can't really stack them too high because you need to get the, well, you need to get the fuckers down, you know what I mean? So you need a lot of space to store these on. Um, if you're only gonna go for dumbbells in the higher scale, so say you started off with some 40s, working up to 50s, 60s, what have you, depending on what you can use, then it might be all right, but it's still gonna be very expensive to buy those individual dumbbells. You've gotta take that into account. Uh, Really good benefit of having fixed dumbbells is that you can do things like drop sets, uh, multiple exercises. So if you wanted to do a circuit of dumbbells, you might want to start off and just quickly do some chest press and then superset into some chest flies. You're not going to fly the way that you've just pressed. So you, if you've got the fixed dumbbells, you can swap them over straight away. Now that's one of the main benefits. Uh, things with like what I've got here, the Olympic dumbbells, you've got to check all the plates off, slip them over and it can become quite time consuming. Uh, if you was going to go for the fixed dumbbell, I recommend you go for the, the rubber encapsulated ones because you can throw them around, drop them on the floor, do what you like with them, and you ain't going to cause much damage to your floor or to the actual dumbbells themselves. I really like the rubber ones for doing circus press because you can get them up on your shoulder, press them up, don't really do any damage to you, but metal ones, if you bruise like a peach like me, well, they're not too clever. Okay, so next up we're going to talk about adjustable dumbbells, things like power blocks, and bow flex. Now, these are really good solutions for people that don't have much space, people that train at home, right? because it's all contained into one little area, the dumbbells are there, you pick your weight, slide it to the right setting, you pull them out. The, the bow flex are the most, um, most that resemble a dumbbell out of the two. The power blocks are actually pretty big, your hand goes inside them to grab the handle and you press it, it's like a big square block. I've had a go with both of them, and to be honest, they didn't feel too bad, to be honest. I have to say I preferred the bow flex from the power block myself. But for me, the the cost of how much these are for the amount of weight you can get out of them, it wasn't worthwhile because I knew I could press a hell of a lot more on dumbbells than what they were offering. And for the price range, it just wasn't worth it. I mean, you, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of pounds for these things. So to me, it was not really, it wasn't really a viable option. Best thing for these is, like I say, space. If you haven't got much space, 
the, the tardy, the fall away, the nice, the go away. They do resemble, uh, they are quite solid. So un unlike an Olympic collar, like what I've got here, the plates don't rattle about, they are a solid system when they're working properly. Um, but yeah, the really big downside for these is that the, the range of weight that you can get with them, they're not really um, maximal in that sense and they're very expensive for what you get. Okay, so I, I'm not really going to go into the spin locks because they pretty much fall under the same category as the Olympic collars. The only difference is, is that they're usually a one inch fit in, they can't handle that much weight and they're usually more reserved for people that are just starting out. Or if, you've, if you're looking on the, um, the classifieds, the free ads, if you see a set of one inch spin locks that come with a lot of weight, go for it because if it's nice and cheap, it's still weight at the end of the day, you're still going to be able to use it. But I'm going to finish off with talking about the one that I've got because obviously it's the one I have the most experience with. <sighs> so anyway, the thing with the Olympic dumbbells is that basically they come as a collar. This collar weighs about five kilos. You need to slide on some collars to basically lock your weights. Now, the downside to having these on there is that if you're doing anything like say a heavy dumbbell row and you end up, say you drop it to the floor and when you change hands, these are going to slide about. I had one of these, if you, once you load these up with a lot of weights, unless you use the actual um, competition collars or the ones that fix on with a clamp, they're going to slide about and I nearly lost my toes one day using this. Um, like I say, the plates are not always stable. They tend to rattle about, especially if you're pressing overhead like that, you'll feel them rattling and it can be a bit annoying. But they still do a job. They're heavy, the weight, they rotate properly in your hands so they're not too, they're not they don't put a lot of strain on your wrist. So they are good to use, I mean, and they're cheap. I mean you can pick up a set of collars for maybe 60 quid. And then if you've already got Olympic plates, if you've got fives and twos, uh, 1.25 stuff like that, even tens, you can get away with using them for now. Then buy some more fives, because fives are really what you want to be using because they, they're, they're the right size, they just fit on just nicely. So you could start off with that and just buy a couple of fives as you get stronger. Uh, for me personally, I would have to say that the Olympic collars are probably the best value for money in respect to what you can do with them and just the way you can expand your, your weight collection. They're the most versatile. They do have the downsides. One is that the weights uh, moving around can be quite annoying. Also, like I say, I, I do like to do circus press. There was a, a video that I did a while ago while I'm doing it and as I'm coming down, the plates will sit on your skin and they'll pinch it and that's a pain in the ass. And also, circus press involves dropping the plates on the floor and as you drop it down, all the plates will slide off which can be a pain in the ass. So, these are just things you've got to take into account. Anyway, I hope those points make it a little bit clearer for you to decide what you want from a set of dumbbells. Like I say, if money was no option and space was no option and I had a massive huge home gym, I would have a full rack of dumbbells because that is just the best way. Full rack of dumbbells. Unfortunately, you could you you could be spending thousands on dumbbells alone, which just isn't, isn't practical. But anyway, there you go. Please like, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and look out for the next episode. Cheers now.